Now, it's CBS Local 2 News Nightcast with Chris Long, Brooke Barry, and Chief Meteorologist Patrick Evans. I'm speechless. It's just really great um, to finally be back in America and on land. Um, the crew is great. I mean, I really can't say enough about them. But, I mean... Are you angry at all? Or you I'm just... not angry. I'm just <laughs> so happy to be home, really. In fact, thousands of passengers so happy to be back on dry land they could and did, yes, kiss the ground. <laughs> the vacation that turned for thousands into a nightmare. Good evening. Right. I'm Brooke Berry. And I'm Chris Long. A lot of them still wearing their robes off that ship, too. The crippled Carnival cruise liner that has been drifting in the Gulf of Mexico for days is tonight docked. Mobile, Alabama is the spot. The inappropriately named Triumph was tugged into that unintended port of call after an engine fire crippled the cruise liner last Sunday, forcing 4,000 passengers to endure just disgusting conditions on board. Randall Pinkston, dockside tonight in Mobile. Passengers waved from the deck of Carnival's Triumph as it pulled into port in Mobile, Alabama, ending a miserable week at sea. Next up for them, the wait to step onto dry land. Because of the lack of power aboard the ship, that the debarkation process could take four to five hours. The Triumph set out last Thursday for a four-day cruise, but that changed Sunday when an engine fire knocked out power. Passenger Jacob Combs says conditions deteriorated quickly. The really bad part was that there was no uh, running water in toilets um, for almost the first uh, 30 hours. Once they finally did get running water, um, the toilets only worked um, in certain places. I would say it's the worst smell imaginable. Carnival CEO showed up personally to apologize. We pride ourselves in providing our guests with a great vacation experience, and clearly we failed in this particular case. Carnival arranged for buses to carry passengers from the terminal here in Mobile to New Orleans or Houston and Galveston, Texas. But family members say Carnival shouldn't be surprised if there are some empty seats on those buses. Beth Atkins has several family members on board, including her daughter. She says her journey will end right here. She said, oh, absolutely no, don't want to get in no vehicle to travel again. We're done. Carnival says it will take four to five hours to get everyone off the ship and moving toward their next destinations, bringing an end to a vacation most would probably rather forget. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, Mobile, Alabama. There are still many questions surrounding the death of fugitive ex-comp Christopher Dorner tonight, but we won't get another opportunity for answers until tomorrow at 4 p.m. That is when officials from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department are holding their next news conference. What we do know tonight is that dental records of Dorner matched the burns remains found in the ashes of a cabin in Angeles Oaks, and many are still wondering about that cabin fire that happened at the end of the Dorner standoff on Tuesday. The Sheriff's Department denies that deputies deliberately set the fire, but audio recordings taken from police scanners seem to contradict that, leaving some people to question police tactics. During that particular scene, if you see a calling that's fallen, we hire from the human race and emotions will rise because maybe someone that have never seen a comrade in arms or a fellow officer killed in front of their eyes, and it's going to be a, an emotional toll. Meantime, Dorner's story continues to be a very hot topic on the web and social media. You can even see this video game. It's titled Christopher Dorner's Last Stand Survival Game. It arms the player with a handgun to shoot out from the wooden cabin in a snowy terrain. Most of Dorner's supporters say they do not condone his killings, but say he is an outlaw hero who went against powerful forces. We want to know what you think about the Dorner story. Share your opinion. You can find it on our website or search for our Facebook page. Our name is CBS Local 2. Hmm. Family and friends tonight are mourning the death of a 15-year San Bernardino County Sheriff's veteran allegedly killed by Dorner on Tuesday. 35-year-old Jeremiah Mackay died in the Mountain Shootout Tuesday. Mackay and attended Rim of the World High School in Lake Arrowhead here, a little more than 50 miles from where he was shot and killed Tuesday. He graduated back in 1995 after being involved in a number of sports. He was a good athlete, apparently. Students at his former school expressed their condolences today. 
McKay leaves behind his wife, a six-year-old stepdaughter, and a four-month-old son. We now know the name of a Lake Elsinore woman struck and killed by a car after trying to rescue a miniature horse. Riverside Animal Control Services says this mini horse got loose near Grand Avenue and Ontario Way in Lakeland Village today. 43-year-old Trisha Aragon apparently ran after the animal but was hit by a car. We're still not sure if Aragon actually owns the horse. No word on whether or not the driver is facing any charges. And tonight, police say a burglary at a La Quinta cell phone store is connected to several other heists across Southern California and Arizona. Officers stopped a van leaving a T-Mobile store on Highway 111 about 2.20 this morning. They arrested the driver, 24-year-old Eric Aguilar of L.A., who was apparently waiting outside while two other men forced their way into the store through an adjacent business. Authorities later arrested one of them in the city of Eastvale. 44-year-old Michael Mixon of Corona and Aguilar both booked into the county jail in Indio. A third suspect described as Hispanic male, about 5 foot 6 inches with a thin build. If you have any information as to the whereabouts of that third suspect, call Crime Stoppers 341-STOP. Well, good evening to you. We are still expecting some gusty winds as we head into this, what will otherwise be a fantastic weekend. You can see the area is shaded in yellow wind advisory until 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. So gusty winds through tonight, through tomorrow afternoon and evening, and then tapering off as we head into Saturday. Boy, spectacular day here for Valentine's Day. And whether it was a holiday or not, look at the numbers we posted. Almost 10 degrees above normal, both ends of our valley. And you can see that the highs at the coast were in the 70s and uh, in the Inland Empire in the upper 70s as well. So we've got a little bit of an offshore flow going. I'm going to tell you how long that's going to last and what it means for your weekend forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Patrick. Lovers of all things modern are converging on Palm Springs for Modernism Week. Tonight kicks off 11 days of more than 100 events celebrating the unique mid-century architecture of our valley. CBS Local 2's Laura Yanez is in Palm Springs tonight. She has a preview of what's happening. Laura. Good evening, Chris and Brooke. Modernism Week is now in its eighth year, and it's attracting modern enthusiasts from around the world. Now, that foot traffic is definitely making some valley business owners very happy. It's great for me as a business. It's a busy, busy time. Patty Hanley is the owner of Palm Springs Walking Tours. She says the event she's been waiting all year for is finally here. Every single day I mention Modernism Week. That's right, kicking off Thursday at Burba in Palm Springs, an 11 day celebration of modern design, architecture and culture in the city. We have the greatest collection of mid-century modern architecture probably in the world. A good reason why organizers are bracing themselves for quite the crowd. Well, last year was 35,000 and we're expecting probably 45 to 50,000. That's vibrant news for Hanley. She plans to pound the pavement, walking dozens of miles throughout the week with more than 25 visitors a day. The clean lines and elegance bringing good fortune to the local economy. The hotels have all been busy. I've been stopping by a lot of them, and I know the restaurants are busy, so it's wonderful for all of Palm Springs. The week includes a variety of festivities, bus tours, films, lectures, and educational events. Well, the more I learn about the architects, the more information I can give back to all the folks who take my tours. The mecca of modernism and sunshine brings those folks back for more. And they see that modern architecture with the background of the mountains, with the environment, and then they get it. You know, they say, ah, this is, you know, Southern California living. Here's theme illuminated modern. You can see it's meaning that for the next week and a half, 10 designated buildings like this one behind me, the Palm Springs Art Museum Architecture and Design Center will be lit up with those blue and orange lights that are right beside me. Now that's the slogan for Modernism Week. So it's a place where people can get information about the architects and the styles of the buildings that they design. Now for more information on how you can get your tickets and a full list of all the events for Modernism Week, you can go to, of course, modernismweek.com. We'll have that on our website, cbslocal2.com. Reporting in Palm Springs, Laura Yanez, CBS Local 2, Chris and Brooke. All right, thanks, Laura. Now, Modernism Week, running just a close second behind the white party in terms of the number of people that it brings to Palm Springs. It's impressive architecture, fun to see. Coming up, a Southland woman says she was fired for having sex before marriage. Why she says this Christian college is discriminating against her and other women. 
Plus, two fifth graders accused of plotting to murder a classmate, the unlikely person who managed to tip off teachers and stop it all. You're watching CBS Local 2 Nightcast. Two fifth graders could be facing charges after allegedly plotting to kill a classmate in eastern Washington state. Court documents reveal the two boys were planning the attack for some time and indicate that one of the students actually took a 45 caliber semi-automatic handgun from an older brother's room. School authorities say the boys plan to use the gun and a knife to lure another student outside the school and kill the female classmate. When police asked the boys why, one of the boys allegedly said it was because she was really annoying, rude, and had made fun of the boys. Fortunately, nothing happened after a fourth grader spoke up after seeing a knife inside one of the boys' backpacks. Children between the ages of 8 and 12 are considered incapable of committing criminal acts in Washington State, but the law does require courts to hold a hearing to determine whether the boys had the capacity to commit a crime. That hearing is set for next week. And a woman says she was fired from a Southern California college after her bosses learned she was pregnant and not married. Amy Johnson has a story. A child is a blessing, and our number one goal is to start our child's life off in a positive light. Terry James fought back tears as she spoke about being fired from her job as a financial aid specialist at San Diego Christian College. I was unmarried, pregnant woman, and they took away my livelihood. They stripped me of my dignity and humiliated me. The 29-year-old San Diego woman was just eight weeks pregnant when she was questioned by her supervisor about the pregnancy. The HR director indicated that she was not being fired because she was pregnant. Instead, he stated that she was being terminated because she had premarital sex. Attorney Gloria Allred represents James, who is now married to the father of her baby, a boy who was due in June. But two years ago, James signed the college's community covenant, like all other employees, to work at the small liberal arts college. The covenant forbids a number of things, including premarital sex, adultery, pornography, homosexuality, and lying. We argue that they are a business entity. As a business entity, they can call themselves Christian College, but they have to comply with the laws of the state of California, which prohibit discrimination on account of gender, marital status and pregnancy. They filed a lawsuit against the college alleging pregnancy discrimination, wrongful termination and gender discrimination, just to name a few. This is really mainly going to have an adverse impact on women because how would they know the couples are having premarital sex? How would they know a man's having premarital sex? The way they know a woman is having premarital sex is if she's not married and she's pregnant and she's showing. That was Amy Johnson reporting calls to reach San Diego Christian College were not returned. Well, sad that you lost a pet. Some people are freeze drying them. Actual animal muscle, bone, tissue, facial features and everything are still there. Yep, you heard that right. Freeze drying your dog, cat, even birds. We'll show you why this costly process is getting very popular. Well, I once went to a vet who was also a taxidermist. One way or the other, you got your dog back. I don't recommend it. Our forecast says that today we were running about 10 degrees above normal, and we are likely to continue seeing some well above normal conditions through the weekend. I've got your forecast for you. It's next here on CBS Local 2 Nightcast. Well, Cupid's flown off for another year. <laughs> he must have enjoyed the weather in our valley today. You know? uh, yeah, I actually don't think there's any guarantee he left. I he think take we... that little diaper off. <laughs> he didn't need it. <laughs> we have a number of resorts apparently that cater to that, so <laughs> why not hang out and enjoy it? It's going to be great weather all the I way through the week. I'm staying quiet on this one. <laughs> Not jumping into that. <laughs> very wise, very wise woman, Brooke Berry. 15 degrees right now in Minneapolis, Minnesota. How about that? There is still plenty of winter left on our map, and it was hard to believe when you think about the fact that today we were in the 80s. These folks are suffering through temperatures in the teens, and they'll go down to the single digits tonight. Big cold front pushing its way in, so there's a drop of very cold air coming across the high plains. But on the back side of that, high pressure bridging in is warming things up, and that's typically how our atmosphere works. One part's got to be real cold, and the other part's got to warm up a little bit, and that's where we are the beneficiaries, at least this time of year. 63 at the present, 2.25. Winds are calm at this hour, and the pressure's gone up just a little bit. We are on, on track for a really nice weekend. 
a little bit of spring weather coming into play. It's down to 53 in Thermal and 52 in 29 Palms. Palm Springs is the heat island tonight at 63 here in the valley. But look at this, Ontario, because of this offshore wind pattern, it's warmer than we are at this hour and likely will be off and on throughout the weekend. Not much in the way of winds here on the valley floor, but as you head over into the IE, we do pick up some more of those gusty conditions. And as I've been telling you, with that wind advisory in place, the area is shaded in yellow, winds up to 30 miles per hour and gusting above that as this high will be remaining over the Great Basin for the next 48 hours or so before starting to break down. Tomorrow morning around 630, the sun will come up and we're going to see temperatures in the low 50s in the west end of our valley. The east end will obviously be colder than that, but it's going to be a very mild start to our Friday and a very mild finish to our Friday. We're going to hit 56 at 8 o'clock, 77 at lunchtime, and then 81 is our daytime high as we move hour by hour through your Friday. And as we continue on into the weekend, things look even better because Saturday and Sunday, upper 70s, lots of sunshine, not into the 80s for the weekend, but pretty close. President's Day is Monday, 75 degrees. Then a storm comes in and we get another taste of Coachella Valley winter. Down to 65, clouds, maybe a shower. That's certainly not bad. Thank you, Patrick. Losing a pet can be a traumatic experience, but now a Missouri company is offering a service that will keep man or woman's best friend by your side almost forever. Time to do some thinking here tonight, folks. Eddie's Wildlife Studio, it's called. They freeze dry nearly 120 pets a year. Anthony Eddie owns the studio, says he started the business after a friend requested it. Eddie says it's not taxidermy, it's actually freeze drying the entire pet. Got that one kind of sleeping right there, minus a few organs and body fat. He says there are just a handful of people, I'll bet, who do it across the country. You get attached to the darn things, and uh, I think everybody that has a pet can identify with that. By the way, freeze drying your pet is not a short process. It takes between eight months to a full year to freeze the animal, depending on its size. Eddie says he's received calls from as far away as Israel and Japan. It's pricey, though. It costs about $850. California inmates moving and shaking to music all to raise awareness about domestic violence. Coming up, how San Francisco's sheriff is hoping both he and the inmates alike can end violence in families. You're watching CBS Local 2 Nightcast. All over the world, and certainly right here in California, flash mobs and dances raised awareness about domestic violence today. As part of the Joint Dancing Without Borders campaign, inmates in Northern California also uh, showed off their moves. I was abusive because I had a lot of anger problems. I still have a kind of an anger problem, but I'm in this program trying to stop my violence and become a better person. A sheriff invited the program into the jails that he oversees. He knows the issue firsthand. Last year, he pleaded guilty to domestic violence charges against his wife, almost lost his job. Now he says he is committed to help inmates end the violence in their lives. The dancing was also part of today's global attention to the estimated 1 billion women and girls victimized by violence. That program called 1 Billion rising. Hmm. Hey, if that works, dance on, right? Absolutely. Next on Local 2 Sports, CIF Playoff Party makes a stop in Palm Desert tonight. Spencer Linton has your exclusive highlights from a first round clash in Division 3 AA. Plus, the Lakers and Clippers have a Valentine's date at Staples Center. On this holiday, a bevy of local high school teams have dates with the CIF playoffs and most wouldn't have it any other way. A very busy night for desert prep teams in three different sports. We begin with girls basketball. CIF first round action between the Aztecs of Palm Desert and Yorba Linda in Division 3 AA. Fourth quarter, Palm Desert trailing 34-18 and the visitors about to increase the lead. Yorba Linda's size hurt the Aztecs all night and look at that interior passing. Easy bucket, Mustangs up 36-18. The Aztecs would fight hard to the finish. Caitlin Gilbert with uh, using the friendly banking hours in the Palm Desert area, I cut the lead back to 16, but PD running out of time. Yorba Linder adds that jumper, and the Mustangs will advance to the second round final score, 39-20. The Aztecs, hey, they'll only get better next year with more playoff experience. On the playoff scoreboard, in girls soccer, La Quinta routes Nipomo 9-0. The DVL champs 
came to play today. Look for them to make a deep run in the CIF bracket. And in water polo, a trio of games. La Quinta advances with a 12-8 win over Carpinteria. Palm Springs loses big at Pasadena Poly by a score of 15-2. Pasadena is the number two overall seed. They lived up to the building, uh, the billing rather. And Palm Desert tops Santa Monica 6-5. Congratulations to all of those teams who will advance on. In Los Angeles, NBA hoops. The Clippers and Lakers before the All-Star break. Kobe Bryant throwing down but if you see the score there the Clippers jumped out to a very quick lead up 15 to 2 Blake Griffin kicks out to Karan Butler 18 to 4 after that technically this is a home game for the Lakers but who are you kidding both of these teams playing at Staples Center Kobe dishing to Dwight Howard LA as in the Lakers never really seemed to get going and couldn't recover from a slow start. Griffin inside again. He's getting better and better in the post. The Clippers dominating this series. They win again by a final of 125-101. That means they've taken all three games against the Lakers this year in that rivalry series. The PGA Tour still working on the West Coast. Round one today at Riviera Country Club in the Los Angeles area. There's Matt Kuchar, had a great first day on the 16th at birdie.